When building a galvanic cell, there are many pieces of equipment that are required. While containers to put the solutions in are a given, the more interesting parts of a galvanic cell include a voltmeter, a salt bridge, and the solutions used to create the cell. To have a functioning galvanic cell, two solutions will be connected in a circuit. To create a galvanic cell with a large electrical potential, pick substances that consist of a strong oxidizing agent and a strong reducing agent and create two separate solutions with the substances. Zinc 2 plus found by dissociating zinc sulfate and copper 2 plus found by dissociating copper sulfate make a good pair for making a galvanic cell. This chart shows the electrical potential of some half cells when they are reducing. The ones that are good at oxidizing are here and the ones that are good at reducing are here. With the solutions, electrodes are also needed to be reduced or oxidized. Select the corresponding metal to each solution and place it in the solution. For example, put the zinc metal in the zinc solution and the copper metal in the copper solution. They should be half submerged so the probes of the voltmeter can touch the electrodes and not the solution. The purpose of the salt bridge is to prevent a buildup of charge on either side of the cell. The bridge itself can be made of filter paper or string soaked in an ion solution such as potassium nitrate. A semi-permeable membrane can also be used to separate the solution, but still allow a flow of charge. The ions move into the different solutions to balance the charge and keep the reaction going. A voltmeter measures the cell potential. Physicist and chemist Hans Christian Orsted discovered the principles behind voltmeters. The electric current in a wire produces a magnetic field around it. Jacques Arsène d'Arsonval then applied this concept by measuring voltage, connecting a pointer to moving cells that shift as the magnetic field increases or decreases. We use it by completing the circuit by making contact between the electrodes and the voltmeter probes. Voltmeters in today's market cost around $10.